today's expectation in the financial markets is for a much more quicker returns. Uh, they are not willing to be so patient. So if you look at it from that perspective, the market feedback that we get is Rane should be you know, capitalizing on its brand, equity and quality image and all that and growing more fast. Most of anything else, you have stayed away from controversies all those years, unlike many other groups uh, up country. They, they are in news for so many other things as well. Right. We, given the fact that you, you have gone ahead with your growth strategy in a very, very, very consolidated way, you, you have gone ahead look for correct opportunities and then capitalize on them. But one thing we feel comfortable is that uh, growth for the sake of top line alone should not be the approach, you know, uh, I think we get into businesses with a slightly different mindset that we are in it to create some institutions, to create a long term value. So from that point of view, we look very deep rather than just get into things uh, for, for a very short term. Does it hassle you if you are uh, classified as a largely the Madras uh, group, you know. uh, uh, but do we have a presence in uh, Hyderabad? I don't know whether we have a We have not now. We have, also yeah, we have a uh, new plant uh, in Bawal, Rihanna, a uh, fairly large plant. And we have three plants now in Uttarakhand. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. At this point in time, I mean, when all, uh, everybody is going everywhere and competition is starting up, and you break out of the channel. Does it an advantage or does it a criticism? You feel an handicap there? Or is it? No, it's not an handicap. I think, uh, uh, see, in our industry today, as you know, being near to the customer, especially yeah. if you're tier one and you're handling large systems like steering systems, which are sensitive to you know, uh, transit and uh, packing and things like that, electronics, some of it in the EPS, we have electronics. So, being near the customer has certain advantages. Uh, in India, there are some disadvantages also, um, as you know, recent developments in Gurgaon and that Gurgaon. area is causing a lot of concern. But uh, essentially, large customers, especially Japanese customers like Maruti Suzuki, want us to be near. So, uh, it has to be there. In terms of management bandwidth, uh, we are trying to develop management bandwidth. Uh, yes, some years ago, we would have thought, can you manage a plant in Delhi, it's far away, how do you go, logistics. But today, I think we have come out of that stage where we are managing plants as far as Rudrapur. And uh, you know, that is a reality which we will have to accept. We will have to understand the local culture. Uh, uh, many of the uh, s local sensitivities one has to understand, adopt to the local environment. Uh, but we, we are learning that. So that's not an issue anymore. But in terms of your clients and so on, so what do you need to or among the top three who are they? Today it would be Tata Motors still as number one, uh, Mahindra and Maruti will be our top three customers. But you don't supply to the, uh, the new mobile? We are supplying to the new car. Uh, we are uh, um, quite strongly present with Daimler uh, for the truck project. We are uh, supplying the power steering, manual steering linkages, uh, steering column, uh, engine valves and friction material. With Renault Nissan, we have just uh, started on one or two products. We have on the friction material, we have already started. In the friction material, in fact, uh, most of our businesses are coming from new Japanese customers because of a very strong technology uh, coming from Nishimo Japan. So a lot of new business has come from people like Nissan, Toyota and Maruti Suzuki. But what could be the mix between the old guys and the like, uh, uh, locally Indian, Indian guys and the new generation foreign guys? So See, uh, as I said, Tata, because of their wide presence in commercial yeah. vehicle to passenger car, are still remain as number one for us. Mahindra is becoming fast, they are growing fast, so they are number two, we are fairly uh, deeply entrenched in Mahindra with all their vehicles, both auto division and tractor division. Uh, 
So in terms of volume, Maruti is now becoming number three for us. So what are the kind of readjustment, uh, adjustment, or whatever adjustment we need to uh, do uh, dealing with the Maruti or Mahindra or Nissan or a homemade company and a foreign oh, company that is set up? Is there a difference in the way you are needed or how to do that? There is a difference and that difference was brought to light and uh, in fact the entire auto company industry I must say learned a lot from Maruti Suzuki mm. in terms of just-in-time delivery. Uh, essentially engaging with the vendor very early in the model development uh, so that you, you really go through all the uh, initial hiccups well in time for the launch of the model. So once the model is launched, it is almost fault free. You might still have one or two problems but no major issues. So early involvement in model development uh, is one thing which they brought in as a new system. So we, we have to gear ourselves so that the line doesn't stop. There is no more cushion available in terms of yard stock. Uh, how do you improve your process? How does one look at processes and improve so that you deliver consistent quality uh, on a daily basis? So uh, creating the right kind of talent pipeline uh, is, is one thing. And then developing the managers uh, to take on responsibilities much earlier. Today we have plant heads who are 34, 35, you know, 36 kind of age group. So to prepare people with the kind of all around exposure to run a plant independently at that age. So that means we have to be able to accelerate the exposure, the development. So we, we have to work on management and leadership pipeline, which is what we are doing now. One investment in uh, defense and aerospace, um, we have taken a stake in a Bangalore based company which is making wiring harness for both defense and aerospace and uh, it's a kind of a technocrat started company and they were looking for uh, corporate uh, backing and uh, finance to grow. Um, being a technocrat, he couldn't uh, do that beyond a point. So he had a good business plan and we are convinced about the you know, uh, uh, background, the kind of cultural fit uh, and, and ethical values etc. So after doing a lot of due diligence, we decided to partner with this company. We have taken a 26% equity with an option to increase in the future as the company grows. So we are also learning this new business because we are not experienced in this area. So what we thought was next 3 to 5 years, uh, about 10% of our revenue can come from this area. This is what we are. Wherever it's a technology intensive and capital intensive business, uh, what they do is the research and development investment, new product development, etc., is so expensive that uh, it makes sense for a Suzuki or a Toyota to, let's say, deal with their supplier globally uh, or one or two suppliers globally because the investment required scaling up etc is one. Second, they are launching now models uh, in four or five markets simultaneously. So therefore they want support for a same component not just in India but in China or in Russia or in Brazil. So these are a couple of reasons why wherever it is a technology intensive product they prefer you know, their own global uh, supply. Where it's a tier two, uh, like an engine valve or a brake lining or a disc pad or an aluminium casting, there I think it's we are on equal footing. Mm -hmm. Maybe we have a slight advantage being already in India. You know, it is easier for us to develop. So uh, I think tier one uh, high technology products. This this follow source principle continues. So the 2.5 uh, thousand two thousand five hundred cost. Uh, there are some export in the component. Yes, we, we last year we did about uh, fifteen percent export. Yes. But you have to uh, piggyback on this uh, guys. Or uh, would, partly, partly we piggyback in the sense TRW, who's our partner, okay. is a big customer of ours. We are exporting a lot of components to TRW, 
both in US, South America and Europe, uh, which goes into their final assembly. But also directly, we export to Volkswagen directly, uh, we export to Deutz and some uh, off-highway vehicle manufacturers in the US, John Deere in the US. So uh, we do some through our partners, some directly. We like to keep a portfolio so that we don't depend on one or two customers. So about 15% mainly to US and Germany. These are our main markets. We see a significant slowdown in Europe. Fortunately, US seems to be holding up, at least till last month, it is kind of held up. So surprisingly, US auto industry is doing quite well. I mean, bro, with regard to your exports, you talk about US and all now. In US, there's this trend about how you know cars are going green, you know, so fuel efficiency, green tech, uh, environment friendly. So, I mean, is the Indian components industry ready for that? Is there anything different, you know, when you export? Uh, Actually, two things are there? happening. One is the IC engine technology itself. Within the IC engines, the environmental regulations are tightening. So, every year, the states like California leave right. and they bring down the emissions, number one, and they increase the mileage required, average mileage expected. So, which means engines are becoming more efficient, right. which leads to uh, better uh, materials, uh, better, if you take our own example, engine valves. Engine valves are becoming more uh, closer tolerances, uh, very, very tight finishes very uh, super finished uh, surface to reduce friction. So there are changes happening in the design of the components. If you take friction material today uh, in OEM from almost 100% uh, asbestos, we have now come to almost uh, less than 15%. Only, in fact, we don't use asbestos in any OE business now. Only Indian aftermarket still in the next two years will be coming out of that total. You also mentioned that uh, your expenditure on R&D as a part of the total revenues will go up from 0.5% to 1.5% at least. So what are the steps we need? Yeah, we, uh, each of the company has got a plan both on capital and revenue. So we have uh, started working on this uh, in terms of improving our testing facilities uh, uh, more advanced. For example, uh, uh, to give you an example, in uh, running brake linings, uh, we've had uh, dynamometers where we can check the life of the brake lining or the brake pad, uh, the noise level, uh, wear and tear, etc. But now the latest one, we are investing in a uh, NVH uh, dynamometer. So it's a very sophisticated one where you can simulate the external environment. So right from say minus 40 degrees, if the car is going to be sold in Canada, or some market like that to let's say 40 degrees plus if the vehicle is going to be sold in the Middle East or uh, somewhere in Arabia or somewhere like that. So uh, it's a very sophisticated uh, kind of a dynamometer. We have, just to give you an example, this year we are installing one of that. In Rani Madras, we have again gone for today uh, in steering and other components, noise has become a big issue mm -hmm. because the vehicles are becoming so efficient. The engines are becoming so quiet. So the noise which was accepted three years ago, today drivers are very sensitive. You know? So steering, a noise which you and I will not hear, today customers are measuring and saying we want to reduce it. So we are going for a, you know, a where we can even, even to measure that noise, we need specialized equipment, etc. We plan, each company was planning something like 15, 20%, 25% growth. And the way things are turning out, we'll be happy if we end up with 10% growth. You know, uh, some product clients are flat in the first six months uh, because there's a huge shift. For example, engine valves were done very badly because not only the market has slowed down, there is a huge shift from petrol to diesel. Hmm. And we got caught by surprise. You know, models which are selling like hotcakes, customers are not buying today. Motorcycles, where we have not seen a slowdown, uh, I mean, for years, for a decade, first time two months we are seeing August and September a negative growth. So, what I'm saying is, to be able to go through these humps, if you are too stretched, then the pressure of management increases. You know, you become, you get into panic situation. 
your rating goes down, banks start putting pressure. So it's a, it's a fine balance one has to keep. But we found that being a little comfortable helps you to go through, say, six months or one year of tough times without panicking too much. Yeah. That's, that's only...